thank you for joining us. So today I thought in this class we would have some kind of exploration of using and working with our inner thighs. And so we'll do poses and either bring awareness to the inner thighs or we'll use poses to feel you know how you know how how flexible we are with the inner thighs or where we feel tight so we'll have a little bit of an exploration with that if you have a belt it's helpful to have a belt um, if not you know i can modify it using your ha hand and i can show you how to modify without a belt so there's always possibilities, so on some, in some level, there's no excuse not to do yoga because there's so many ways to modify poses. Let's begin. So come to lying on your mat and just bring the feet down to the mat with the knees bent. And we'll just do a little bit of bending the knees and straightening them just to wake up the abdominals a little bit. And then we'll start our exploration. And if you have your belt, just bring it and put it next to you. So if we just bring our hands behind our head, if you can do that, if you need to, you can always keep the hands down next to the hips. We're just gonna inhale, straighten, exhale, bring them down to the floor. Now, of course, you know in this, you can modify it by having the legs a little bit lower. But as you do this, see if you can notice what's happening in the legs. Is there, can you feel those inner thighs at all in this pose? You may not be able to, that's okay. Just notice if you can, when you stretch those legs, if you can bring some attention to those inner thighs. Bend them and down and inhale. Press through the heels. Exhale, bend, inhale, extend, exhale, down. Now we'll do a brief modification. Inhale the knees to the chest and extend one leg long. Can you feel the inner thighs there? And then bend that knee back in. And then exhale, bring the other thigh straighten through it and bring it down and then place the feet on the floor and so when you extend that leg long you're not wanting to turn it out at this stage you're wanting to feel how that inner thigh drives the leg through the heel so when we do that modification you want to see how the inner thigh actually works here so we'll try that again with that awareness bend the knees in extend one leg bending the other one in and you can also perhaps feel this top leg where the inner thigh rolls towards the heel too and then bend the knees into a chest and extend the other leg long see if you can feel that inner thigh engaging and rotating down to the floor and then bend it in we'll do two more like this Extend, bring it back in, and extend the other leg, and bring it back in, and then bring the feet on the floor. Perhaps if you need a little release of the pelvis, you can press into the heels and just shake out the pelvis. There's something really nice about really loosening up the whole pelvic girdle by just letting the heels and the sit bone connection do the work here. And then bring the pelvis back down and we're gonna do that same position, but this time we're gonna rotate the top leg when we do it. So bring the legs in, you're gonna extend one leg long and rotate the other leg and then rotate it back in. And then do it again, rotate out, rotate in. Can you feel that? And then bend both legs in, extend the opposite leg long, rotate the thigh out, 
rotate in. So the action is coming through the thigh and the hip and not through the knee. Yeah, and do it again if you haven't. And then bring both legs in and bring both legs down. And we'll do another round like that. Inhale the legs in, extend one leg, rotate the thigh out, rotate in, rotate out, rotate in, bend that knee in, and then the other leg, so extend the other leg long, rotate the thigh out, rotate it in, rotate the thigh out, and rotate it in. Bring that leg in, feet down, and again, you can just press the heels up, the pelvis just slightly off the floor, and just shake out any tension you may have built up. And then bring the pelvis down. And now you're gonna inhale the knees in, extend to the ceiling, Open the legs wide, and you'll just notice, you don't have to go very far here, just notice how much you can open this way. It might not be far. And you're not trying to rotate through the hips, you're trying to keep the legs still parallel to each other. And then you're gonna exhale, bring the feet together down as low as you can go. If you need to be halfway up, that's okay. And then inhale the legs up, open the legs, exhale down, inhale up, open the legs, exhale down, feet together, inhale up. Open the legs, exhale down, bring the feet together, inhale up. Now just bend the knees, place the feet on the floor, shake out the hips, and then we'll do the other direction. So you'll bend the knees in, straighten them down to the floor, then you're gonna open the legs and bring them back up together. And exhale, lower straight legs down. Open the legs, inhale up, bring them together. Again, you can modify and do less movements, like a shorter distance, if that's what you need. Again, exhale, down, open them, inhale up, Bring them together, one more. Exhale down, open up, inhale up, and bring them together. And then bend the knee down, and this is where if you've got a belt, it's handy. Now, there's two ways you can do this. You can keep, I'm gonna put the belt on my right foot. I'll show you how to do it without a hand with your hand instead of the belt. You can have one leg bent if it's easier for you, or you can straighten through the leg. Now, the bottom leg, you need to rotate that thigh down towards the floor. That inner thigh is going towards the floor. It's not opening out right now. So you are actually working with that. Now, if you only have the hand, you can always hold the thigh when you bring the leg out and hold it here. Now I'm gonna put the belt on the ball of the foot and then open the leg wide. If you need to rest the elbow on the floor, you can. So you're working into those left side abdominals. You're rolling the thigh down, the extended leg. So that's my left leg. And then my right leg is opening here. Now you can play with bringing the heel down a little bit and then the leg might be able to come more towards the floor and then slowly bring it up and then see if you can bring it even higher up. 
And again, if you need to hold the thigh, that's how you can do this pose. And then remembering to roll the left thigh into the ground, the left inner thigh. And then inhale, bring that leg up. And then bend that leg down. And you've got both knees bent to start with. You, like I say, you can always keep the supported leg or the leg on the floor with the foot on the floor. Or you can extend it long. So when you extend it long, you want that inner thigh to roll to the floor. So it's helping stabilize the leg in parallel. And then open the other leg to the side. Again, you can use your hand to hold the thigh if you don't have a belt. You can use towels. There's so many things you can use like a belt, but just be careful if something st is stretchy. A belt is more firm, so it doesn't stretch out. It's, it gives more stability. Now slowly bring that foot lower, like towards the other leg, and you might be able to bring it closer to the floor. And then you can bring it sort of mid-level and then bring it all the way up. And then release that leg and then roll to your side and come up into all fours. And you just want to stabilize yourself as best as you can. Make like your back is like a table, so you have to engage those abdominals. And really press into those hands. And then inhale. I'm lifting my left leg up. See if you can keep everything stable while that foot is coming up into the air. Then bring it forward and slowly open it out to the side. So you can stay here with it open out to the side. Or if you want a little more action, you can extend through that leg. I got a little cramp in my hip. And then bring it back in, bring it back up and then bring it back down. And I'll just turn around so you can see me from this side. So inhale the knee up, so the heel comes up, stabilizing through the hands and the opposite shin. Inhale forward, open out to the side. You can stay here, or you can extend that leg out and again, you can bring it back a little bit if it's too difficult to bring it directly to your side. And then bend the knee in and place it down. And we'll just do a couple of cat and dog tilts. Release that because we'll repeat that again in a second. And I'll turn around to show you from this side again. Inhale, the foot up. So this is my left side, but you could be doing your right side. Bring it forward, then open the thigh up. And you can stay here. It's useful probably to stay here a few breaths and just feel what that feels like. And then you can extend through the leg. Then you can bend it again, bring it back in, back up, and release down. And then inhale, bring the knee in. Or no, sorry, bring the foot up. Then bring it in, open it out to the side. Oh, I was gonna change directions. <laughs> open out to the side. Extend through the leg, bring it back in to the center, back 
up and down. And then just a couple of more cats and cows or cats and dogs to release the spine. And then slowly tuck. You might want to walk your hands a little forward as you tuck your toes under and come down into downward facing dog. Knees down, big toes together. Knees wide. Coming up again, tuck the toes under, downward facing dog. And then walk the feet and the hands towards each other. And you can slowly come up to standing. And we'll stand in the center of the mat and do a few poses from legs wide so you can feel what's happening with your inner thighs. So bring the hands on the hips and then you can just slowly bring them out wide. So you may have to practice with your distance. Sometimes you may need to bring the feet a little closer just to feel that stability and maybe engagement in those inner thighs and then you can slowly bring them just a little bit wider. You want to make sure the feet are pal parallel. You don't want to be coming into the feet out wide. You want to be able to get into that parallel position. And you can soften the knees at first and then really straighten through the leg. Can you feel those inner thighs engage? A couple of breaths here. And then we'll soften the inner knees so we can take the left foot toe to heel, right foot heel to toe into Trigonasana. So here, See if you can really engage that back inner thigh as it rotates behind. And then here you engage the whole leg, lifting the top of the leg, and then the inner thigh is lifted here as well. And keeping the hands on the hips, see if you can just feel that engagement in the legs. And then you can come long with the torso And then we'll do an arm variation to see if you can really feel that stability in the legs. Bring those arms up to your side. And then keeping the arms there, see if you can slowly come up, still feeling how those inner thighs engage. And then you can bring the arms down, feet back into parallel. And then again, you can soften the knees to start with and then slowly engage the legs. Feel how those inner thighs engage. And then soften the knees. Take the left foot, right foot, toe to heel, left foot, heel to toe. Now see if you can feel how the back thigh is rotating behind and that the inner thigh on the pointed out leg, the left leg is engaged. And then slowly hands on hips. We bring the torso to the side. See if you can feel how strong the legs are, how engaged the legs are to support you here. It's almost like your upper body has total freedom because the legs are engaged. And then you can inhale those arms up in this variation to feel that leg engagement. And then inhale, slowly come up, feel that leg engagement, arms up. And then release the arms down. And bring 
both legs parallel. See if you can feel, you can soften them. You can play with that softening the knees and then re-engaging them. It's almost like doing reps, you know, when you do reps with weights, you can soften the knees, re-engage, soften the knees, re-engage, just feel. If you can get more awareness that way, it might bring more awareness. So now, again, we'll take the right foot, toe to heel, left foot, heel to toe. And we're gonna bend into pause for Konasana. So you're gonna first bend through warrior one and then lean the torso as you go into Pajpa Konasana. And again, the leg here is like it was in triangle pose. So that inner thigh is wrapping around. And here the inner thigh is long to the inner knee. And it's like the quadriceps are really engaged. And the heel bone to the sit bone is connected. And then if you want to go to the a full, more fuller pose, then you can bring the top arm up or the top arm up and over. And inhale, slowly come up. Pass through the legs wide where you can soften the knees. Engage, soften the knees, engage the leg. It's almost like doing ballet plies or dance plies. And then again, soften the knees so that you can rotate the right foot, toe to heel, left foot, heel to toe. And again, this back leg is just like triangle. You're bringing that inner thigh around. Bend deeply and hear the inner thigh lengthens to the inner knee. And if you want to go more fully as you bend over, you can bring that forearm, the top arm either straight up or up and over. And then inhale, slowly come up, bring the feet wide. And again, if you'd like to soften the knees, Engage the legs, soften the knees, engage the legs. You can do that a few times. And then the next pose, you can use a block if you need to. I'm not going to bother to grab the block, but you might want it for, or we'll do arch and drasana, and you'll just see where the inner thighs come in that pose. So again, soften the knees, take the left foot toe to heel right foot heel to toe and how we're going to go into this again this thigh really needs to rotate back and you start to bend the front leg as you so slowly inch that back leg up and then you really are using that inner thigh to bring that leg up to really engage into Ardha Chandrasana. Really press into that upper heel, especially. And then you're gonna slowly bring that leg down. You notice I didn't bring the top arm up. We're working on the inner thighs today. And then see if you can come back into a really long-legged triangle pose. And just notice your inner thighs there. And then inhale, slowly come up. Bring the feet parallel again. You can really feel my heart rate picked up in that one. So again, if you want to soften the knees, straighten them, soften them, and straighten them, you can do that. And then soften them, and we'll go to the other side. So right foot, toe to heel, left foot, heel to toe. And then as you bend the front leg, you're going to slowly inch that leg up and it's like you're lifting it with that inner thigh pressing through the heel of the foot oh i wasn't gonna put my hand up sorry and then you're gonna lengthen 
that leg behind you so there's more space between your feet and come into a very long triangle. And then inhale, slowly come up. And again, bring the legs wide again. Now, we're gonna go into this next pose, really with the legs engaged, okay? So you can soften them for a minute and then really engage the legs. And this is, you need to go at your pace, at your distance, you might need a chair for this, but you can just go this far if it works for you, which is really engage those legs, lift the chest up, you can look up at the ceiling and then you're slowly coming down. Legs are still engaged. See if you can really feel those thighs lift and those inner thighs rotate back. And then if you're okay here, you can bring the hands to the floor if you're okay. Otherwise, just keep them on your waist. And then if you want a little more stretch, you can place the fingertips on the floor, inhale, look up, bring the chest through, exhale, walk the hands towards the feet, find that length in the head, bending the elbows towards each other, Might have to re-engage the leg. And then inhale, walk forward. Now this can be challenging, but see if you can start to bring more space in the legs. And it just depends on your hands where you can put them. See if you can get a little bit more width and more stretch. And remember that your edge in practice might be intense, but you don't want to be creating pain or challenging. So if this is too much, you back off and bring the legs a little closer. But if you can do this, stay with it for a few breaths. If your breath becomes ragged, that's an indication that you need to back off. So if you can bring them a little bit further apart, maybe you need to bring the hands closer to each other and you can support more of your weight into your hands and arms. Just getting more of that stretch. And then if you're able to, bring the hands down and see if you can slowly sit down. That might be impossible for you, but that's okay. <laughs> it, you know, you, you just come down as best as you can. Now that we have the legs wide, you wanna make sure the thighs aren't rolling back. You wanna make sure they're rolling down to the ground. See if you can really press here. Press through the heels. And then you can slowly walk the hands forward. And you can just use the fingertips. If you can only keep the hands here, that's okay. Or if you can only keep them here on the thighs, that's okay. If you need to put something under your sit bones, like a blanket, or a block, you can. And just notice where you are in this pose. Where is the challenge? Where's the comfort? Where's the muscular engagement? If you can bring the hands a little bit more forward, do that. If you can't, just stay where you are. But see if you can find that softness in your forehead this does become a bit of a forward extension or a forward bend. And you may notice as you stay here for a few breaths, you might be able to go further. You might feel stretch in your back, your inner thighs, the hips, just notice where that is. And then if you 
can go a little bit deeper. A couple of more breaths. out of the pose, slowly walk the hands up, and then you might need to use your hands to now just shake out the legs, just bring them in. Maybe you need to shake out the pelvis a little bit. And then come down into whatever form of Shavasana you'd like. You can do regular Shavasana, feet on a chair, feet up the wall, whatever you have at your disposal and whatever your body feels it needs to do to finish the practice for today. And since we've been focusing on the inner thighs, just take your attention to that space from the inner hips down to the inner knee. Is there a little bit more awareness of that space in the body? Perhaps you feel that you've worked it muscularly. Perhaps you even feel you perhaps stretched that space out. Maybe there's nothing different. Just notice what you notice. There's no right way or wrong way. A lot of yoga practice awareness, paying attention to what is happening in your body as you move through these poses. At the same time, your body, your mind, your spirit is all part of this. Might notice how your thoughts are, how your feelings are, what's happening with your breath. Perhaps bring some attention to the rest of your legs. Are you noticing about your calves? outer thighs, hips, ankles, toes, feet. Your pelvis, how does this all relate back into your pelvis? It's the core of your body. relates to our uprightness, the way we face the world as a biped animal walking on two legs. How does your ribcage and shoulder girdle and arms relate into all this? neck, head, and toes. How do you hold the inner image of your whole body? Warts and all, tension and all. Perhaps you feel a little more spaciousness, quiet. Perhaps even just notice your jaw.
gently begin to reawaken your body, bringing a little bit of movement into your fingers and toes. Big stretch through the body. And over to your spine. To sitting. Namaste and have a beautiful day or evening. Just maybe throughout the week, the days, start to pay attention to how your inner thighs help support you and help with your mobility and stability as you move about your day. Namaste. joining us.